Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Good morning, I'm John Tucker. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. Karen, stocks begin the last trading day of the week near record territory. Yesterday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit the 40,000 mark before pulling back. Investors this morning repricing U.S. rate cut expectations to only one reduction this year. And several Fed officials, including Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester, say the central bank should keep borrowing costs higher for longer as policymakers await more evidence inflation is easing. Incoming economic information indicates that it's going to take longer to gain that confidence. So holding our restrictive stance for longer is prudent at this point as we gain clarity about the path of inflation. Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester, New York Fed President John Williams, and Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin, all speaking separately, argued it may take longer for inflation to reach their 2% target. Well, John, the economy also in focus in Asia. China has announced its most forceful attempt yet to shore up the beleaguered property market. It's easing mortgage rules and encouraging local governments to buy unsold homes from developers for conversion into affordable housing. And meanwhile, China's economy has become even more lopsided as factories hum while shoppers lag. And Bloomberg Daybreak Asia anchor Brian Curtis has more from Hong Kong. China's consumer spending slowed significantly, but industrial production accelerated. It's another indication of the country's uneven recovery. Retail sales expanding 2.3 percent, well below the estimate of 3.7 percent. Auto sales actually contracted. On the other hand, industrial output jumping 6.7 percent from a year ago, a handy beat of the 5.5 percent forecast. And investment in property development plunging 9.8 percent. In Hong Kong, Brian Curtis, Bloomberg Radio. All right, Brian, thanks. Well, on the political front, China and Russia are promising to intensify cooperation against what they see as U.S. containment. This says President Xi Jinping welcomed Russian President Vladimir Putin to Beijing for a state visit. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon says geopolitical tensions are high, but the U.S. needs to engage fully and deeply with China. China does, is not a natural enemy of the United States. They have a lot of their own problems. Uh, yeah. So, you know, to me, we, we could work together as best we can. And then we have common interests, climate, anti-nuclear yeah. proliferation. And still, given the heightened tensions, J.P. Morgan's Jamie Dimon says he's moving with caution in China. He spoke with Bloomberg's Francine Lacqua from the bank's Global Markets Conference in Paris. Catch their full conversation on the Bloomberg Talks podcast. And President Joe Biden's top economic advisor, Lael Brainerd, is defending new tariffs on Chinese imports. She says the tariffs are necessary to avoid economic turbulence from unfair trade practices. China's using the same playbook it has before to power its growth at the expense of others by investing in significant industrial overcapacity and flooding global markets with artificially cheap exports. The White House Economic Council Director Leo Brainerd's remarks come after Biden announced a sweeping set of tariffs on a range of goods he said was necessary to protect American businesses. Well, John, it's an off day in the hush money trial of Donald Trump. Yesterday, his attorneys grilled the prosecution star witness, Michael Cohen. And we get the latest from Bloomberg Law host, June Grasso. Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, grilled Michael Cohen for hours yesterday about possible inconsistencies in his trial testimony and his well-documented history of lying under oath, questioning whether he really got approval from Trump for the hush money payment. Blanche made some inroads in undercutting Cohen's credibility and even undercutting some of Cohen's testimony at the trial. Cohen will be back on the stand for more cross-examination on Monday when trial resumes. In New York, June Grosso, Bloomberg Radio. All right, thanks, June. And now back to the markets and checking some stocks on the move this morning. Shares of Reddit up more than 12 percent. The social media company forging a partnership with OpenAI that will bring its content to the chatbot ChatGPT and other products. And, John, we stick with this artificial intelligence theme. Snowflake and talks to acquire an AI startup. And Bloomberg's Doug Krisner has that story. 
It's Reka AI, and we're told the price being discussed is greater than a billion dollars. Reka AI makes large language models, the software trained on data from the Internet. These LLMs can be used for things like captioning images or chatbots. Reka AI was founded in 2022 by former researchers from Google and Meta Platforms. In a funding round last year, Reka AI was valued at about $300 million. Now, that round reportedly including funding from Snowflake's venture arm. Snowflake makes tools to organize and analyze data in the cloud, and it sees generative AI as a growth driver. Last month, Snowflake released its own LLM, Arctic. In New York, I'm Doug Krisner, Bloomberg Radio. All right, thanks, Doug. And the meme stocks on the move once again. GameStop shares up 9%, while AMC is gaining 4% pre-market. These gains come after the two stocks slumped for a second day. About $7 billion of the roughly $11 billion of market value gains have been wiped out. And John, the world's super rich club now has 15 members with fortunes over $100 billion, the most on record. We get more with the Bloomberg's Charlie Pellet. They are riding the waves of artificial intelligence, luxury goods, and geopolitical shifts. According to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, the combined net worth of these people is up 13% this year to $2.2 trillion, beating the pace of inflation and the broader stock market. Between them, they hold nearly a quarter of the wealth of the world's 500 richest people. In New York, Charlie Pellet, Bloomberg Radio. All right, Charlie, thank you. And it's time now for a look at some of the other stories making news in New York and around the world. And for that, we're joined by Bloomberg's Michael Barr. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Severe thunderstorms have hit southeastern Texas for the second time this month. Houston's mayor says at least four people are dead. There have also been windows blown out of high-rise buildings, down trees, and power outages for more than 840,000 customers. Houston Fire Chief Samuel Pena. The majority of our calls have been gas leaks and, and down wires. Okay? If you smell gas inside your home, please leave the area and dial 911 from the outside. Um, especially if the power is down, when that comes up, if you're smelling uh, gas inside your home, it could be potentially hazardous. Flights were briefly grounded at Houston's two major airports. The suspected gunman in the shooting of Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico has been charged with attempted murder. Fico is in serious but stable condition. The suspect has not been formally named, but reports have widely identified him as a 71-year-old. The Republican-led House Oversight Committee voted last night to recommend a contempt of Congress resolution against Attorney General Merrick Garland for his failure to turn over audio recordings of the special counsel Robert Hur interview with President Joe Biden. The vote came after an ugly session as members traded personal attacks. Democrats came to Texas Representative Jasmine Crockett's defense after this comment from Georgia Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene. Do you, do you know what we're here for? You know we're here about uh, just a, uh, well, I don't think you know what you're here for. Well, you the one talking about. I, guess I, I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. No, I ain't leaving. nothing. Hold on, hold on. Listen. Order. Later, Crockett fired back after Green's words remained in the record. If someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleached blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A uh, uh, what now? Crockett later posted, this is what happens when mentally deficient people who can't read and follow rules or just don't give a damn somehow end up in Congress. Senator Bob Menendez says that his wife will undergo a mastectomy after she was diagnosed with breast cancer. The New Jersey Democrats' bribery trial is underway in Manhattan. The process continues toward reclassifying marijuana as a less dangerous drug. It took a big step from the Justice Department. President Biden, in an online video, called it a major move. Far too many lives have been upended because of failed approach to marijuana. And I'm committed to righting those wrongs. You have my word on it. A 60-day public comment period will soon begin. Global News 24 hours a day and whenever you want it with Bloomberg News Now. I'm Michael Barr and this is Bloomberg, Karen. All right, Michael Barr, thank you. 
Time now for the Bloomberg Sports Update with John Stashauer. John, good morning. Good morning, Karen. It was certainly looking like the Rangers were going to be the 10th team in Stanley Cup playoff history to win the first three games of a series and lose the next three. Carolina led 3-1 in the third period. To the rescue, the longest tenured Ranger, Chris Kreider, has the most playoff goals in team history. He knocked one in. Five minutes later, he tipped in another on the power play. And four minutes after that, he struck again. Rangers seven in here. Rapper, they score! They score! The Rangers lead it four to three. Oh my goodness gracious! Ryder with a hat trick in the third period. Yeah, they were happy on WEPN. Rangers had an empty netter, one five three. Take the series four two. They're off to the Eastern Conference Finals. So the Rangers. Win a series clinching game six on the road, and we'll see if the Knicks can do likewise tonight at Indiana, where the Knicks are 0 4 on the season. They've lost those four by an average of 17 points. Minnesota dismantled the Nuggets by 45, so they'll play game seven in Denver. Back in the NHL, Vancouver scored final minute, beat Edmonton 3 2, leads the series 3 2. At the U.S. Open last year, Xander Shoffley shot an opening round 62. He did the same thing yesterday at the PGA in Louisville. Shoffley broke the course record at Valhalla. He's got a three shot lead. He's had 12 top 10 finishes in majors. He's never won one. Bloomberg Radio with round two covered today after the U.S. markets close. In Philadelphia, Mets blew two leads, including another ninth inning blown save by Edwin Diaz, but the Mets won 6 5 and 11 innings. The Yankees finished a dominant sweep in Minnesota, 5 0. The Twins had a home run. First at bat of the series opener. They never scored again. The Yanks outscored them in the series. 14 to 1. Caitlin Clark struggling in the WNBA, only nine points. Indiana lost to the Liberty by 36. John Stash Hour, Bloomberg Sports. Coast to coast on Bloomberg Radio, nationwide on Sirius XM, and around the world on Bloomberg.com and the Bloomberg Business app. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. And from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, I'm John Tucker. 512 on Wall Street. We're seeing some caution in risk marches this, uh, this morning after a lackluster close on Wall Street. Let's get you set up for the trading day ahead now with our first guest, Ben Laidler, global market strategist for eToro. Nice to talk to you, Ben. Thanks for being with us. Um, let me uh, get your impression first of the Dow crossing over 40,000 yesterday. Uh, just another number? Uh, yes, but you know, new all-time highs typically beget new all-time highs. And the Dow's sitting on one. We've had 23 from the S&P 500 uh, this year. Um, similarly, you know, NASDAQ's all three major U.S. indices at all-time highs. Uh, price momentum is the most powerful factor in markets. Um, and I think this is very fundamentally supported. We have an earnings recovery and we have interest rate cuts still on the horizon. So I think it's all pretty positive. Yeah. At this point, uh, is it momentum that's in the driver's seat or the combination of everything that you just mentioned there? Yeah, I think it's the combination. I mean, fundamentals obviously lead and we've just come off a very good first quarter earnings season. Uh, we had do of NVIDIA next week, which is the sort of last hurrah, but so far it's been very strong. And the Fed has kept the door open to interest rate cuts. And, you know, those are the fundamentals. But I also think, you know, the technicals are important. New all-time highs typically lead to new all-time highs. There's a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines. And we saw what that meant with the last recent sort of pullback, which we've rebounded pretty strongly from because I think some of that cash, you know, saw that as an opportunity and came off the sidelines. So I think it's... Uh, fundamentals lead but the technicals are also important is it a time to be fully invested in risk assets i think so i think this is the early innings of a bull market i think those twin pillars of earnings and interest rate cuts are are in place uh, i guess you know the caveat is that we've basically made an annual return in five months given that we're up about 11 percent for the s&p 500 this year so you know everything in moderation there will be pullbacks there will be volatility along the way. But I think the message of the last month is that uh, those dips will be bought and that the fundamentals remain remain pretty strong. Do you buy in from your perspective into the uh, U.S. exceptionalism story? Uh, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that I think you just look at the data and it's there, whether it's the economy, whether it's the stock market. But I do think what's interesting right now is the rally is broadening out. Uh, 
out of aside from big tech in the U.S. into other sectors and especially globally. China's back in a bull market. Even the U.K., which is where I'm sitting, which everyone likes to be depressed on, is is having a mini rally here. Uh, and it's not just stocks. Commodities are also having a sort of a bit of a stealth rally. Uh, and I think this is very, very healthy. Um, we're less reliant on one sector, which is doing very well, but, um, you know, makes us somewhat vulnerable to a stumble there. Uh, and it's a reminder, I think, that the rest of the world is in a slightly different place, where growth will reaccelerate, where interest rate cuts uh, will come early. So, yes, US, U.S. exceptionalism is a fact, but I think some of these investment opportunities uh, uh, lie elsewhere at this point. Yeah, some regulatory filings, they gave us insight into what high-profile investors are doing with their money. Do you find any value in that? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I think it's you know, a very a good, great source of new ideas. And to, and to your point, uh, they are also broadening their views. I mean, if there's a generalization, they're trimming back on big tech. Uh, and they're looking to take a little bit more risk and a bit more diversification. They're looking at small caps. They're looking at financials. Uh, they're looking at China. Uh, but I guess the caveat, um, a lot of those managers haven't performed very well so far this year. Um, if I look at what retail investors have owned, they've actually performed much better. Yeah. Again, small um, picture in time. So take it with a pinch of salt. But um, I, I think it's very interesting just to see what they're thinking and what they're doing. And, and I guess it melds right now with sort of our views that people should be sort of broadening out from big tech and yeah. looking at other parts of the world. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington. Bloomberg 1061 in Boston and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm John Tucker. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.